morning and welcome to the news. As usual, the Wednesday package offers an hour and a half of news, reviews, previews and interviews on unfolding events and issues of interest to Nigeria and Nigerians. Tonight, we have a special look at the power sector and the new initiatives to energize a sector crucial to the growth and development of other sectors, especially the manufacturing sector. And still on sectoral appraisals, how healthy is the nation's health sector? A correspondent examines the issues within the provision of healthcare services in different regions and the efforts to give the sector a reviving shot in the arm. On security, law enforcement agencies clamp down on outlaws as Bochi police neutralizes bandits. On transportation, getting the rail services back on track the challenges and opportunities on the railways as well as the development motive energizing the locomotive. As usual, we have the regular segment of business, education, social interventions and sports. As you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. I'm Ian Ray John and this is News Extra, our first outing this year. Let's set sail. <laughs> Electricity, we all agree, is one of the greatest catalysts for development in an economy like ours. Thankfully, there is a renewed drive to accelerate delivery of reforms that will improve electricity supply nationwide, as Minister of Power, Adibayo Adilabu, unveils quick wins for the sector this year. Well, Joshua Ojito takes a look at priority areas and how they return around the sector. 2024. A new year with hopes for improved electricity supply as the power minister unveils turnaround agenda for the sector. From the boardroom to the power substations, the power minister says the objective is to achieve sufficient electricity supply nationwide. To ensure customers pay only for electricity consumed, a review of cost-reflective tariff is underway. As federal government says, subsidy for the vulnerable customers will be sustained. Closing the metering gap will be giving attention to address liquidity crisis in the sector, as well as ensure every customer is metered. To strengthen transmission infrastructure, federal government is accelerating implementation of presidential power initiative to speed up completion of Siemens project. The equipment are beginning to, to, to arrive. At the same time that work is going on in uh, transmission, work is also going on in the distribution. So those weaknesses, the deficiencies, will now be uh, reaped or harvested same time. Not just increasing the reforms in the regulatory aspects, the federal government is also taking measures to do some in-house cleansing. To this end, the transmission company of Nigeria is to be unbundled, where regional grids will be established for effective management of the grid. The Electricity Act 2023 now allows, in line with the 1999 constitution as amended, that states may establish the legal regulatory and commercial frameworks for their domestic electricity markets. Ensuring every power plant generates at full installed capacity is what federal government targets with investment in off-grid and renewable energy. On energy theft and vandalization of power infrastructure, a joint support team will be constituted in collaboration with the Office of the National Security Advisor to address the menace. While electricity customers await implementation of turnaround agenda for the power sector, they can only hope it will translate to sufficient power supply. Joshua Ojito, NTA News. Indeed, Joshua, Nigerians have renewed hope that the power sector will deliver in 2024. And for power, let's talk water, 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 everywhere, but none to drink. You know that popular refrain. Well, that won't mean much to the people of Jigawa State and environs as the federal government has expressed commitment to work closely with the state government to execute the Greater Dutsi Water Supply Project. Now, it is worthy of note that the project has defied completion attempts by previous administrations in the state. This good news is coming up as the Minister of Water Resources, represented by Deputy Director of Rural Water Supply, Habu Hassan, paid a working visit 
to the state. Muhammad Musa Askira reports. The minister who noted that the project, which was initiated by the Sami Nutraki's administration in 1999, has been captured in the 2024 budget, said the Tinibu's administration will not relent until the project is completed. Since the coming of Omar Namadi's administration seven months ago, the minister announced the governor has been up and doing to ensure that the Dute Mega Water project is kick-started. Governor Omar Namadi, who thanked the minister for his efforts towards the realization of the project, stated that the execution of the project project is in fulfillment of the President Tinubu's promise to the late Emir of Duty. Greater Duty Water Supply Project is in the line item of Federal Ministry of Water Resources budget. And uh, we are aware what His Excellency has been doing to make sure that more funds have been added to what we provided from the ministry. Gaz that government is seriously committed to the project and also the President has given me his commitment to the project. And I want to assure you that we'll never relent until we have realized this mission. Greta Duce Water Supply Project experts believe, when completed, will eradicate the challenges of water supply in Duce and environs. From Duce, Muhammad Musa Askira, NTA News. Heading to the jewel of the savannah now for Nigeria to achieve unified and equitable transformation. States must come on board the national reform train with establishment of the right institutions of government that drive growth and development. Emmanuel Akila reports that the Director General National Bureau of Public Service Reforms stated this while interacting with staff of the Bureau in Gombe, the Gombe State capital. The National Bureau of Public Service Reforms works with state governments to help public and civil servants embrace the National Transformation Plan that would help the country navigate faster towards growth and development and catch up with developed countries. While in Gombe, the Director General, National Bureau of Public Service Reforms, congratulated the state government for establishing the Bureau and some of the critical institutions that fast-track development process. The direction and the directive of the President and Commander-in-Chief is for us to get all state governments to create their own bureaus of public service reforms. We want the states to key into the reforms, most especially around digitalization of our process. Uh, he has come, in fact, with so many things uh, we need to adapt so that uh, we can uh, reform our state. Already some of those things we have started and we need to really build on it so that we can have a much stronger service delivery to the citizens of the state. The National Director General encourages states without the Bureau to establish one while the enlightenment continues on the National Transformation Plan in Gombe. Emmanuel Akila, NTN News. Governor Basi Utu says his administration is on track of revitalizing the state economy through provision of quality road infrastructure which it describes as an enabler of socio-economic development. The Cross River State Governor said this during the inauguration of the newly constructed road at Muri Unta Eke Avenue in Calabar. Justina Etten tells us more. The once deplorable road at the Muri Unta Eke Avenue in Calabar Municipality now wears a new look. In line with Governor Basio II administration's commitment to change the infrastructure narrative of the state. The construction of this road, which serves as a link between Ikot Ishi and other adjoining communities, is something the people had prayed for for several years. And now, Sucker is here. I was very surprised that you were signed For so many years, where we did for some others for this road. I thank the man. The man going to repair this road. That is why I'm happy. With this commissioning of this new road, we have access to our different home. Governor Tu says the newly constructed road will decongest gridlock at the popular Efiete Junction, even as he vows to do more to take development to every nook and cranny of the state. The party that doing this road of the city in Calabar, Justina Etem, NTA News.
In other news, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC Limited, is assuring the public that there is no imminent increase in the cost of premium motor spirit, PMS, commonly known as petrol. NNPC Limited urges Nigerians to disregard what it calls unfounded rumors and assures that there are no plans for an upward review of petrol price. A statement by Chief Corporate Communications Officer, NNPC Limited, Olufemi Shuneye, advises motorists nationwide against engaging in panic buying, reiterating that there is presently ample availability of PMS across the country. We head to the glory of all lands now, but this uh, story doesn't bring glory. For social media followers, the story of a five-year-old uh, given out in marriage in a community in Bayelsa State came as a shock, given that this is the 21st century. Unbelievably, as the trending story sounded, a correspondent in that axis, Ebenemi Zitimiola, took the trial to unravel the truth about the story and unfortunately came back with a positive tale. Well, the good news here is that the state government has risen to the challenge by not only condemning the marriage, but is taking steps to rescue the child and deal decisively with all the key actors according to the dictates of the law. Ebenemi will tell us more about this. 2003 domesticated and bios state in 2016 among other fundamental human rights provides for the right to survival parental care and protection from abuse molestation exploitation and child marriage among others sadly these rights are sometimes violated by the same group of people who are supposed to not only nurture and instill good moral values in these children but also to protect them from abuse this was the case of a minor, a four-year-old, who was reportedly given out for marriage to a 54-year-old man in a Kede community in Sagbama local government area of Bayoso State. It was, however, gathered that the marriage, which was carried out in the full glare of the public in line with cultural beliefs, is said to be a symbolic ceremony aimed at saving the life of the minor who according to them, was betrothed to the same man in her earlier life as a maiden, but was separated by death. In the course of investigation, we discovered that, according to the, the, the recounts from the community, that when the child is brought close to the man, the child recovers. So we, we are thinking, what level of proximity? How close? Agreeably, culture is a way of life of a people, but between belief systems and natural and state law, what are the implications of the supposed child marriage as enshrined by the child rights law and constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? A child like that lacks consent, lacks the capacity to give consent over uh, an illegal celebration as such. So as a state, we condemn the act. Uh, while um, the constitution protects um, freedom of belief, you are allowed to believe whatever you like to believe. That's what the law says. We have freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. However, uh, when that belief translates into conduct, and that conduct is prohibited by law, then the penal circumstances uh, have, have been activated, and the criminal consequences will ensue. The incident, which is trending on the social media space, has been widely condemned, and the Bioso State government has taken steps to rescue the minor from all the actors involved. Parents and guardians are advised to protect their children while increased awareness of the provisions of the Child Rights Act is advocated. Ebinimi Zitemiola, NTA News. We hope the needful is done in that case to prevent a reoccurrence. And now, looking at other issues, advanced technology in female reproduction is bringing to fruition the inspirational quote, you will become a parent if that is your heart's desire. Uche Guchuku in this special report unravels the puzzle around in vitro fertilization, IVF, and its prospects after menopause. The trauma experienced by married couples, especially the women in African society, has led many to seek all manner of assistance, including child adoption. However, in the last three decades, solutions for infertility has been proffered with advancements in technology. Many who have the fund go for one of the several techniques called in vitro fertilization, IVF. 
for every woman. Uh, there is uh, a specific program. No two patients are given the same treatment because of different challenges. We have as high rate as 70% success rate. Research shows menopause sites in between the ages of 45 and 55, so fertility drops within this time. But advances in medicine have made it possible for women to still give birth at this stage. Can a woman produce eggs after menopause? Yes, with the modern trend also, even if ovarian reserve is the sole problem, we have capability nowadays to rejuvenate the ovarian reserve. And there are products that we can use to inject into the ovary that can actually stimulate and bring about rejuvenation of the ovary. And by so doing, we can now harvest it and go ahead with the process of fertilization and endometrial transfer and implantation. This was the case of a 70-year-old Ugandan woman, Safina Namukwaya, having endured years of mockery and devastation due to childlessness, took advantage of advanced medicine. She opted for IVF, which resulted in the birth of twins. Previously, she, we had treated her with the IVF, again, the same process, three years ago, and she conceived and delivered a baby girl. She came back to me, to us, this beginning of this year, wishing to have more children. I accepted, and we implanted two embryos, and they will have become babies that we see now. A dream come true, you may say, but how safe is it for a woman to give birth at this age and the health of the babies? The age is just a number. A young woman can also die from complication of pregnancy. An old woman, if she's fit, can also survive. Naturally, even babies that are born to elderly women or fathers who are more than 50 years and above, they are generally uh, liable to have a very, very... Uh, no risk of abnormalities. Well, it is clear that every woman now has a greater chance of bearing children, irrespective of her age, all thanks to advanced medicine. And now, a confirmation of an adage that says, it is not over until it is over. Uche Ugochuku, NTA News. I'm going to thank Uchi. Of course, with IVF, age is indeed just the number. Still talking health. Access to health care is a fundamental human right that plays a pivotal role in the overall well-being of individuals and families in Nigeria. A country with a population of over 200 million people. Ensuring health care access for all remains a complex and multifaceted challenge. Again, Uchi Ogochuku in this report explores the state of healthcare access for families in Nigeria and the challenges they faced in 2023 as well as opportunities for improvement in the coming year. The world is changing in basic ways that have profound implications for human health and well-being. In view of this, it becomes crucial to build equitable and resilient health systems that give access to health for all, as the World Health Organization demands. Let's feel the pulse of Nigerians on their stories when it comes to accessing health care in 2023. When I took my son to the hospital, I have that experience that I was the one going up and down, calling, shouting before I could get a doctor to attend to my son. Especially the auxiliary nurses are usually not nice at all. We get an emergency something that you attend to, but they will just neglect them on the floor. Some them will not give them any attention. When you go to government hospital, they will tell you you didn't come on time. That the doctors have gone. You would have come in the morning. If you are coming to do anything now, even before they attend to you, they must tell you what you need to pay, what you need to do, instead of like giving you the service first. To tackle the challenge of drug out of stock and the impact of high cost of medication in the country, the National Health Insurance Authority launched the Medicine Supply Initiative and Operational Guidelines 2023. We are doing everything through accreditation, quality assurance uh, to ensure that the best quality of care is provided. Nigeria needs to make sure that we put in place uh, mechanisms where uh, some of the regulatory procedures do not become bottlenecks, so that when they ship, for instance, vaccine in country, uh, they are readily distributed. 
to those who need them. What should Nigerians expect going forward? Now, we have a four plan, Marshall plan, to reform, rejig, and revamp our healthcare system so that it will deliver for our citizens in a, in, a, in, in, in a nice way where our citizens will get the same level of healthcare that it's comparable to what you get in uh, a Western world. The strong political will demonstrated at the moment underscores other players playing their parts towards the actualization of improved quality, accessible and affordable health care. Uchi Ugochuku, NCA News. And away from health, the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, Kwara State Command, has blamed the fatal road accident that claimed 11 lives along Ilori Bode Sadu Highway on Tuesday on top speed and poor visibility during the night journey. The sector commander of FRC in Kwara State, Stephen Dawulong, spoke to Abdul Hafiz Alaya on the unfortunate incident. The accident, according to the sector commander, involved a Toyota Hiles bus and a daft truck who had a serious head-on collision due to wrongful overtaking. A total of 18 people were involved in the accident, out of which 11 lost their lives while seven others rescued with various degrees of injury are now receiving treatment in the Bodhisattva hospital. Uh, while trying to overtake a vehicle, collided with an oncoming truck. The scenario of that accident brings to mind two issues. The issue of night journey. Because for a vehicle to get to, from Gombe, to get to Bodhisattva by 4.05 a.m., it means he has been traveling through the night. And you see, the truth about night journeys is that the, de the drivers drive for long hours without resting. Compulsory use of speed limits device, according to Stephen Tawulong, is still in force and the command will not hesitate to punish offenders within the ambits of the law. Shola Wahid, NCA News. Senator Ibrahim Lamido is spending about 300 million naira scholarship for students in Sokoto East Senatorial District to assist them in the pursuit of their tertiary education. Dalhatu Abdullahi reports that this was made known at the flag off of the disbursement of the second phase of the scholarship under the auspices of Senator Lamido Education Support Fund. The beneficiaries are students from the eight local government areas that make up Sokoto East Senatorial District and are going studies in institutions of higher learning within and outside Sokoto State. 2,840 screened students received 50,000 naira each under the second phase of the Senator Ibrahim Lamido's Education Support Funds program. The guest no doubt serves as a saving grace in the academic pursuit of the benefiting students considering the current economic realities when parents and guardians are struggling to meet the challenges of daily family upkeep. The program is part of the Senator Lamido's bold step toward alleviating poverty through empowering youth and students toward achieving unbroken access to quality education and improved economic status. Leader of the disbursement team and chairman of all local governments of chairman of APC in Sokoto State, Muhammadu Salkin Alaru Lela, appreciate Senator Lamido's education support fund for the generosity to the constituents irrespective of political affiliation. The world is changing. The Western education is very important in our society. The majority of us try to defy the cost. So it allowed me to come and pay the, the, the almost uh, 82 million to Sokoto is to sponsor us, so that would really appreciate. The educational support fund of the lawmaker is targeting 5,636 students of higher learning from Sokoto East Senatorial District. If not with this type of opportunities, students, particularly from the low-income families, could not make it to be in schools. In Sokoto, Dalhatu Abdullahi, NTA News. Another news, the Chief of Staff, to the President, Femi Gwajagwamila has urged political office holders in the country to use their positions to improve the well-being of the citizenry by contributing their quota judiciously. The Chief of Staff was speaking at the inauguration of a series of projects in Lagos State. Essie Mwamaka reports. It was more like a homecoming for the Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Gwajagwamila, 
who before now represented Surulere 1 Federal Constituency at the 10th House of Representatives. Inaugurating four projects in different locations across Lagos, alongside the Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Sununu, and the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Tunji Alausa. Governor Babajide Samolu, who led the initiative of the federal government, stated that the inauguration of the projects is a testament of the government's goodwill to the people. When we say that for us in Lagos, it's about the collaborative effort that the executive, the legislative, at any strata, that will continue to collaborate and ensure that we're the same coin, we could be different side of the coin. The chief of staff reiterated his commitment to working for the interests of Lagosians. I want to assure all of you here today that in every role and in every assignment, I will continue to serve with the gratitude to God and to all the citizens who have vested their faith in me, in my party, the All Progressive Congress, and in our president, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu GCFR. Some of the projects inaugurated by the Chief of Staff include a conference center at the Lagos State University of Jaw, newly rehabilitated Babs and Imashan Road to Rulere, Samson Ibarra Community Development Center, as well as a newly constructed general hospital in Surulere. One of the legacy projects inaugurated by the Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Bajabia Miller, is the newly constructed general hospital named after him, and it is aimed at providing quality health care to Lagos residents. In Lagos, S.A. Owamaka, NT News. Many thanks, S.A. We're from the Center of Excellence. Now the Governing Council of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, NIPR, has approved a slight adjustment in its approach to enforce strict compliance with professionalism and excellence in public relations practice in Nigeria. A statement says the council at its 106th meeting considered the presentation by the NIPR Act Compliance and Enforcement Committee headed by General Chris Olukolade retired and the submissions of some state chapter chairman on the subject to use the period of 1st January to 31st March 2024 to intensify public enlightenment and awareness before commencement of full crackdown on 1st April 2024. All concerned? are by this communication strongly encouraged to take advantage of this new window to conclude their membership processes to avoid prosecution of individual corporates and their employers in accordance with the provisions of the NIPR Act. Time for a break. Please stay. Thank you for staying. 2023 was another challenging year for the Nigeria Police Force. Daunting as the year was, leadership of the force says it was able to surmount some of the internal security challenges. Security correspondent Francis Form in this report takes a look at some of the feats recorded by the force in the year and the review. 2023 was an election year in Nigeria and the Nigeria Police Force, being the lead agency in internal security management, was faced with enormous challenges one of which was protecting the nation for smooth conduct of the elections. Before the general elections, the force had engaged in training and retraining of its personnel. As part of the arrangements, operational vehicles were procured and distributed to all the commands and formations. The elections may have come and gone, but the role played by the Nigeria Police Force in ensuring peaceful general elections did not go unnoticed. The AU and ECOWAS commended the force for the role. Despite the mixed reactions that greeted the outcome of the general elections, the force was also on hand to ensure a peaceful transition. Then comes the change of button at the Louis Edit House, which ushered in Kayode Egbetokun as the 22nd Indigenous IGP. During his maiden conference, IGP Egbetokun highlights his pleasant vision. We will further leverage cutting-edge tools, data analytics, and intelligence networks to stay one step ahead of those who seek to disrupt the peace. In his first major official outing, gets towards containing the activities of non-state actors and other criminalities plaguing the country. Inspector General of Police Kayode Egbetokun raised a 40,000-strong special intervention squad he assured Nigerians that 1,000 of the squad will be deployed to each state of the Federation as a standby force 
while 4,000 will be deployed to volatile areas in the country. We'll bolster our capacity to respond swiftly and decisively to security threats. Before the conduct of the off-cycle governorship elections in Bayelsa, Imo and Kogi, the leadership and strategic management of the force had converged on Oweri, the Imo state, to strategize on how best to please the nation. The outcome of the management conference is what has led to the efforts of the police operatives within the year under review in the arrest of 1,974 kidnapped suspects, 1,621 rape suspects, 2,314 cultism suspects, and 2,771 armed robbery suspects. The force also rescued 820 victims, recovered 820 vehicles, and cracked down many other profile cases to ensure that Nigerians sleep with their eyes closed. Barely three months in Police Affairs Ministry, the Minister of Police Affairs, on assumption to duty, reiterated the commitment of the ministry to facilitate police reforms that will enable the Nigeria Police Force to provide effective service to Nigerians. We are trying to ensure that we come out with a very robust uh, arrangement towards the 21st century policing in Nigeria. So we give them appropriate direction, appropriate guideline to ensure that we achieve the uh, reform agenda of the Mr. President. The Ministry of Police Affairs and the Force have also attended international conferences at different levels with a view to changing the policing narratives in Nigeria. For the IGP, intelligence-led policing will remain a cornerstone of his administration's effort while assuring Nigerians that the force under his leadership will continue to leverage on cutting-edge technology to dismantle criminal elements terrorizing Nigerian communities in 2024. Francis from NTA News. Security is key, and of course, every Nigerian hopes that 2024 will be a much better year security-wise. All right, away from security now, let's talk about the labor struggle. The year 2023 was a journey of endurance and hope for the government and Nigerian workers. This was occasioned by long-term economic measures put in place by the federal government. Labor correspondent Joseph Utsen reports that dialogue and collective bargaining was key in resolving much of industrial disputes that followed implementation of the measures. The election of Bola Tinubu as Nigeria's new president and Joseph Ajero as new president of the Nigerian Labor Congress, both in February 2023, meant the labor industry will be selling on a new ship. <laughs> Many had high expectations that both leadership will drive measures that will change the fortune of the country and workers who were already experiencing economic hardship with a drop in the global price of oil. Make sure that our refineries work and we refine uh, enough petroleum products for our national consumption. A leadership NLC that is more vocal, that is more result oriented. We have moved from the era of training people for three days, four days, giving them 20, 20,000, 50, 50,000, and the next time you come, they are back. So we have now graduated to sustainable training. In as much as the organized labor agreed with government to save the subsidy funds and invest in sustainable social protection projects, it wanted immediate release of palliatives to help citizens cope with hardship occasion by the removal of petrol subsidy. An agitated labor force threatened industrial action over high cost of living that launched a series of engagements between representatives of the government and that of the organized labor. Eventually, the planned nationwide strike scheduled for October 3rd by the Nigerian workers was suspended. This followed commitment made by the federal government to pay 35,000 monthly wage award to workers Starting in September, invest 100 billion naira on CNG buses to ease transportation, remove VAT on diesel, and support businesses and farmers to produce and grow. Government commands payment of the wage award, but inconsistency implementation is giving the workers another concern. So we call on government 
to remove all the bottlenecks that have been experienced today regarding the wage award and to continuously pay this sum. Meanwhile, the federal government gave states and the FCT 5 billion naira each to implement palliatives and has launched some CNG buses. Despite amicable resolutions of much of the industrial disputes in 2023, the year still had a downside with Nigerian workers embarking on a nationwide strike December 14th after the maltreatment of the NLC President Joseph Ajiro in Imo State at a planned protest over what the leadership of the organized labor described as violation of workers' rights in the state. The Minister of Labor and Employment and the National Security Advisor engaged the leadership of the NLC and TUC to convey government apology over the incident, as government promised to prosecute perpetrators of the act and meet other demands of labor. The result was calling off the strike action after two days. There is no doubt 2023 had been a tough year for both the Nigerian worker and government. But all are hoping 2024 sees fruits of the long-term economic measures the government dared to implement in Abuja, Joseph Utsen, NTA News. All right, the federal government recognizes the role of information and communication technology as the enabler for developing other critical sectors, including education, health, agriculture and manufacturing industries and its drive to diversify the economy from oil and gas and encouraging partnerships between local and foreign investors. The question is, what are the low-hanging fruits that this sector offer Nigeria to stimulate the growth of the country's economy? Let's find out in this report by ICT correspondent Olajide Bele. The information and communications technology ICT sector significantly contributed to Nigeria's real gross domestic product in the first quarter of 2023. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, the ICT sector accounted for 17.47% of Nigeria's real GDP, increasing from the 16.2% recorded in the same period the previous year. The mandate of the Ministry of Communications, Innovation and a Digital Economy is for Nigerians to have universal access to digital technology while ensuring inclusivity and building up competences in certain advanced digital skills of importance to the nation. Today, we're, we're mainstreaming the use of uh, digital banking, for instance, as one of the ways to bank. Today, many people are learning online. What will happen to these people if they don't have the knowledge and the know-how to be able to use this technology? They'll be caught out of it. By being digitally literate, it means that as the innovators help to diversify our economy, as they come up with solutions that can increase productivity, that the average person in our economy can actually participate and use this solution. Adequate infrastructure to boost communication network, code of conduct for data protection, and a strategic roadmap for action plan, enhanced broadband penetration, as well as heightened consumer protection advocacy were part of the success story. We deployed the, the strategy of going to the office of the SGF, go a circular for all MDA to comply. And within two months of that circular, the level of compliance increased to 9%. With a lot of advancements in the sector comes great responsibility on the part of government to ensure that there exists an enabling environment for the industry to thrive through the introduction or amendment of key regulatory instruments. The mandate from the federal government, especially for the Federal Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy, requires that for infrastructure holders like NICOMSAT, we help in contributing to at least 70% coverage ubiquitous coverage in the country so that people have universal access across the entire nation. The second cohort idea heart incubation program, powered by Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, has seen innovators translate mere ideas to tangible products ready for market with cash prizes to establish their startups. This resonates with what we are trying to do in promoting additive manufacturing where you can have these 3D printers, you can modularize your manufacturing line. You don't need to have a big manufacturing plant. This will help us in job creation. 
It will help us in solving our local problems and building our own digital solutions in country. Another big stride for Nigeria's ICT sector is the launch of National Blockchain Technology early this year to realize national digital literacy framework to achieve mid-term targets of having 70% of Nigerians digitally literate by 2027 and long-term targets of 95% by 2030. On Laji Day, below, NTA News. Mr. Mr. Environment, environment was, was uh, uh, more of solution searching to the ever escalating environmental challenges posed by climate change. While the ministry garnered remarkable partnerships along the way in its quest to confront these ravaging situations, COP28 proved a decisive moment, crowning the ministry's many activities that defined 2023. Charles Alpha brings us some of these key moments. The first major activity for the Federal Ministry of Environment for the year under review began with assessment of the Nigerian Carbon Pricing Initiative, the most effective way of producing greenhouse gas emissions and support implementation of the Nigeria's nationally determined contributions. The carbon we are talking about is derived from all the emissions, the gases that are referred to as greenhouse gases. With the year 2023 regarded as one of the warmest year on planet and with temperature and heat waves rising around the world, the ministry joined civil society organizations and climate justice advocates to launch the Climate Watch to remind the world that urgent action was needed as time was gradually running out and earth getting to a tipping point if nothing was done. The appointment and swearing-in of Ministers of Environment shortly after President Bola Ahmed Tinubu took over as President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria provided more impetus in the fight against climate change. With their appointments came both local and foreign partnership, indicating interest to join hands to slow down impacts of the escalating weather events. First was the United Nations delegation on drugs control Oxfam Africa and the African Climate Forum. Others were the delegation from the government of the Netherlands, Denmark, members of the EU and UNESCO. We are trying to build that cooperation across the nation, in fact across international boundaries because like we are, we are cooperating with other countries, West African countries and even other uh, African countries. So we need to do more. The year also saw the federal government of Nigeria and the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, and formal engagement with the Hydrocarbon Pollution Remediation Project under the Ministry of Environment with the completion of the organization's five-year technical assistance project. So one of the biggest issues that we are confronting is trying to recover polluted lands in Ogonland, Niger Delta and other areas. The year on the review also provided opportunities for the ministry to pack major global events with countries around the world from the marking of Ozone Layer Day to World Toilet Day and Tree Planting Day with bamboo trees as focus. COP28 in Dubai with Nigeria making its voice heard on burning issues and hosting over 50 side events at the Nigerian Pavilion and signing of MOUs to facilitate Nigeria's net zero and renewable energy capacity efforts. Uh, Nigeria participated and Nigeria were able to showcase our efforts in mobilizing Africa and in mobilizing ECOWAS to ensure that uh, we key into that ambition. For the ministry, 2023 was quite eventful and impactful. And given the results and collaboration, it is hoped that 2024 will even avail better opportunities and innovation in the Federal Ministry of Environment's bid to tackle Nigeria's climate woes. Charles Alpha, NTA News. All right, away from the environment now, it is customary that every year the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, prepares ahead of imminent disasters with different approaches due to the dynamics of events. Yet 2023 may have come and gone with different scenarios of disasters, especially flood. 
The new approach of disaster risk reduction mechanism adopted by the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to mitigate the volume of devastation and casualties accompanying the yearly occurrence of disasters seems to have yielded positive results. Correspondent Ilyasu Yakubu examines these approaches in the year and the review. Nigeria has over the years been battling with the management of disasters year in, year on. These disasters range from flooding, building collapse, fire, road and air accidents, insurgency and communal conflicts among other forms of disasters. The most prominent among these disasters that is being predicted every year has been flooding, ravaging the entire country. The 2023 seasonal climate predictions released by NIMED and flood outlook by NISA indicates that 178 local government areas in 32 states, including the federal capital territory, Abuja, fall within the high risk of flooding, and 224 local government areas in 35 states and the federal capital territory are within the moderate flood risk areas, while 372 local government areas are within the low risk areas. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, and other intervening agencies have been engaging to concretize measures aimed at bringing lasting solutions to the perennial flooding in the country. The DG NEMA did not stop at that as he engaged the Governor's Forum to harmonize all efforts. We have tried hard to take disaster risk reduction to the grassroots through constant advocacy for state governments to set up functional SEMA and LEMCs with adequate funding and trained manpower to save lives and safeguard livelihoods in times of disaster. Another contributory factor that is the flood devastation was a gradual release of excess water from Lagdo Dam and other neighboring dams, which has not been the case in the past. Director General and National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Mustafa Habib Ahmed, is confident that with the adoption and mainstreaming of the new disaster approach, flood devastation will be a teen of the past. Coordination is a vital component of disaster management, which needs to be given adequate attention. Apart from the sensitization programs, provision of relief materials to victims of disaster was a priority of NEMA as it went through the states of the Federation, including the FCT, to distribute relief materials to victims of floods and vulnerable Nigerians. The year 2023 also witnessed building collapse across the country, especially in Lagos and Abuja, and NEMA officials were on ground all through to provide rescue assistance in collaboration with other emergency respondents. In Abuja, Ilias Yakubu, NTA News. And still on emergency response, but now we focus on the FCT. In a cross review of the year 2023, the FCT Emergency Management Agency saved 1,845 lives through 24 calls via its 112 emergency toll free number. 19 lives were, however, lost to disaster and emergency situations across the nation's capital in the year and the review. In this report, correspondent Onoto Yakubo brings us highlights of the sector in the year. 2023. From life camp to Kuboa through Wuse, building collapse in parts of the city constituted threats and gave cause for worry for residents. A breakdown of search and rescue operations indicated 1,373 lives rescued from flood disaster, four lives lost to building collapse, 173 saved from five calls and six lives lost. Major fire outbreaks made the records with 247 lives saved and two lost. Flood-induced casualties used to be a case too many in the FCT a couple of years ago. Today, 
proactive mitigative measures change the narrative. Trade more has been declared a trade uh, 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 a disaster zone. Why? Because we had 116 houses marked for demolition because they are all built on waterways. But these houses, we were not given the opportunity to remove these structures because they took the uh, LCTA admi LCT administration to court. Although, with resignation of the organization's pioneer director general, and in the face of the prevailing circumstances, emergency management model in the FCT, according to observers, reference an emerging city constantly striving to enhance safety and service delivery. One of our major responsibility is uh, disseminating early warning signs to the public and sensitization activities. However, the FCT is saying that public safety is a fundamental right in democratic societies as the role of government has continually fueled agencies and other local actors in proactive steps to identify hazards and impede on the prevailing situation. In Abuja, Onotu Yakubu, NTA News. Let's pause here. News Extra will be back shortly. Welcome back. The businessman is here. Benny, what's the latest? Well, oil and prices welcome to business. Oil prices were little changed in Asia and trade on Wednesday after sharp moves earlier in the week as markets await concerns about the U.S. economy against potential supply disruptions from ongoing tensions in the Red Sea. Brent crude fell one cent to seventy-five dollars eighty-eight cents a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude features slipped eight cents to seventy dollars three cents a barrel. Oil prices had climbed around two dollars earlier in the week following attacks on vessels in the Red Sea. And on that note, let's now see prices of other commodities around the world. <music> Now, taking a look at stocks in the new year, investors gain 846.37 billion naira as the All Share Index advanced by 2.04%, the highest in the new year. The market closed higher by 1,546.69 basis points as the market capitalization also recorded a gain of 846.37 billion naira. The total volume traded advanced by 79.83% to close at 927.56 million, valued at 10.69 billion naira, and traded in 11,629 deals. Fidelity Bank was the most traded stock by volume with 108.11 million, while UBA was the most traded stock by value with 1.54 billion naira units traded. And take a look at the global outlook. Global shares slipped again as the rate cut euphoria fades. Let's take a look at the figures on the global stocks. That is Business News. News Extra continues with Ian Ray. Ian Ray, it's nice doing business with you. Many well, thanks, uh, Benny. Looking forward to that line every Wednesday. All right, now the Nigerian Social Insurance Trust Fund, NSITF, says it did not at any time reject 40% deduction of employers' contributions by finance ministry as reported in some sections of the media. In the statement, the general manager of corporate affairs, Wachuku Gutson, 
insists that the NSITF has no such powers as the management of the fund, is fully aware of the circular conveying the presidential directive on 50% automatic deduction from internally generated revenue of federal government-owned enterprises. What the managing director of the NSITF, Maureen Alagoa, stated in her New Year message is a reiteration of an appeal earlier made to the former Minister of Labour and Employment, Simon Nalong, on the 3rd of October 2023 for a review of the inclusion of the NSITF in the Fiscal Responsibility and Finance Act of 2020 in view of its special status as a non-Treasury funded agency holding contributors' money in trust. The statement posited that the NSITF stands at the threshold of social and economic change and poised to overcome its challenges as a custodian of social security, indicating further that amidst its accomplishments, it is also grappling with challenges impeding the fulfillment of its mandate, one of which is the deduction in 2022 of 40% amounting to 1.4 billion naira from employers' contributions by the Ministry of Finance as an operating surplus in line with the Fiscal Responsibility and Finance Act of 2020, despite the fact that the NSITF is not a revenue-generating agency. NSITF states that it is a tripartite agency holding funds contributions and trust for the benefits of employees under the ECS and without an operating surplus. The NSITF is also not treasury funded and does not draw from the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the Federation and therefore seeks for review and removal from the schedule of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. As still on sectoral reviews, there has been major developments in Nigeria's rail sector in 2023, which has actually shaped events that would be unfolding in 2024. Larry Gwile takes a look at some of these developments in the just rounded off year. Developments coming to play in the nation's railway sector might bring back the good old days in terms of contributing to economic growth. What then are these major events? In 2023, the railway constitution was amended, moving it away from exclusive legislative list to concurrent list, allowing for the creation of state lines in which Lagos State has already taken advantage of this with its Blue Rail Line. One of Portugal's largest construction company, Mota NG, with a stake in China's Communication Commission, signed a 1.48 billion euros railway infrastructure project in Nigeria, which we hail Kano Maradi Rail Construction. The beginning of rail freight service hauling cargoes from Apapa port to Ibado has already commenced. The rail manager is upbeat about this freight line since 2024 as demand is on steady increase since it started. 2024, we are looking forward to increasing the number of freight trains we are running to Ibado and to uh, Mobilaji Johnson here because we are in the season of moving export and import. He also mentioned other areas of improvement that will be implemented in 2024. The, the passenger train, like just uh, in the late quarter of uh, in the late quarter of uh, 2023, we introduced the Apapa uh, Kajola train on a standard gauge, moving from Apapa to Kajola. In 2024, we are looking forward to more patronage, increasing the number of passenger trains we are going to run from Lagos to Ibadan. In terms of enhancing passengers' travelling experience services, some areas of improvement were identified. We should equally look at how we can, you know, in a way, you know, bring in some sort of, you know, passenger railway interactive outlook, whereby they can be getting feedback directly from passengers. He ticketing it's a new addition in 2023 where passengers can book reservations online. The rail manager said the process of e-ticketing will be perfected in 2024 and use the opportunity to call the attention of the public to areas of concern. Optimism is the feeling amongst Nigerians and nations railway for 2024, since the work seems to be clearly cut out for them to follow through. In Lagos, Larry Bileyi, MTA News. 
President Tunibu's address to Nigerians in the first day of the year has been described as a reassurance of hope and the realization of the renewed hope agenda of the present administration. Amaka Owo sought the views of some Nigerians on this and now reports. As President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in his New Year broadcast address to the nation promised to achieve the governed objective through the 2024 budget. Some Nigerians have reacted to the address stating that it is a rededication of the president's commitment towards tackling challenges facing the nation. We expect that the renewed hope will not just be a mantra. It will not just be a slogan that we shout on the streets or at the top of our voices because we are party members. No. So I have hope. The government is promising that uh, there will be a new minimum wage. Uh, we hope that that is, uh, is done. And then um, in terms of the promise also on security, that is very, very important. That the government has to deal with that. The government also has to deal with the improvement in power supply as it promised. Um, so that Nigerian businesses, Nigerian economy can be uh, revived. Uh, the messages were delivered and the content of the message is really reassuring, especially in terms of the policies and programs geared towards improving the well-being of Nigerians and at the same time ensuring that Nigeria become part of the leading economies um, in the world. Assurances were also made by the president in providing equal opportunity and participation towards a buoyant economy and a secured nation for all. In Lagos, Samaka O, NTA News. It was a moment of joy and a time to remind the people of their heritage for them to know where they come from as the people of Southern Kaduna turned out en masse to showcase their rich cultural heritage to the world. The various ethnic groups at the event displayed the bravery, resilience and dedication their ancestors are known for. A lesson for the upcoming generation. Mohammed Umar Ajinge reports. Many people come back home for days. The Southern Kaduna Festival tagged experience in prison showcasing cultural heritage. <laughs> to the admiration of people from across the globe, the various ethnic groups displayed their culture, music and dancing skills. <laughs> Like most people here, the Kaduna State Governor Ubasani is delighted with the celebration which shows to the world that the area is now enjoying peace. Our diversity is a source of strength. We must harness our diversity and use it effectively to grow and develop our local economies. We are one people and must never allow conflict entrepreneurs to retard our progress and development. I'm so pleased today coming to witness this cultural show of oneness. We may be speaking different languages. We may be very diverse, but there is strength in our diversity. Over 50 ethnic groups are participating in this event, which to many is a ceremony like no other that reminds them of their heritage. In Kaduna, I'm Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. Nigeria is indeed blessed with rich culture and heritage. All right, away from the center of learning, now let's now talk politics. Since Nigeria's return to democratic rule in 1999, various political parties have administered leadership from one state to another, all in the quest to provide good governance to the people. In this report, David Irie examines the challenge of internal party democracy and the quest for good leadership. Political parties are vehicles through which those who seek to govern the people are conveyed to offices of authority. Unlike some clients where individuals are permitted to seek political offices as independent candidates, the Nigerian constitution provides that Candidates can only be elected through political parties. This provision has therefore concentrated the weapon of authority 
to determine who gets what on the hands of political parties. Recent development from the 2023 general election has shown how challenging it could be to manage political parties. Despite the record made by the Labour Party to become the third most popular party in Nigeria with over 30 National Assembly seats, the leaders could barely gather their spoils when from nowhere some youths gathered somewhere in Edo State claiming to be world executive and suspended the national chairman of the party, Julius Aburi. This action was further reinforced by a former deputy chairman of the party, Lamidia Papa, whose group secured a court injunction to suspend five key members of the National Working Committee and declared himself the acting national chairman of the party. Whether we like it or we don't like Labour Party is our own party. The dust raised by this action was eventually doused by a judgment from a Benin High Court which nullified the purported suspension by the youth, a judgment that was also upheld by appeal court. And we affirm that Comrade Barrister Ju Julius Aburi is the party chairman, and he remains so. Some of them are a, 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 a suspended member of the party who are no more members of her party. Some of them are people that have sold the party out to other political parties. The new Nigeria People's Party has also had its fair share of the party leadership crisis. From efforts to reorganize itself after the 2023 general elections, a group led by the former publicity secretary, Major Agbo, and the founder of the party, Dr. Boniface Anyebonan, created a splinter group and declared the presidential candidate of the party, Rabi Musa Kwankwaso, suspended. In one of the states, our chairman, on the day of the election, by six o'clock in the evening, when results were trickling in, went on Facebook, congratulating himself that he has delivered. You know, in politics, when you say to you deliver, he has delivered his polling unit, his word, his local government to another political party. So we discovered that we cannot carry those people as long as we are preparing for 2027. As long as the parties are dependent on one person or the other, or groups for funding, if you are expecting internal democracy, you are making a big mistake. The man who pulls the trigger puts in his puppets, those he can control. So whatever he tells them is what they do. Beyond the quest to get political power, ideological philosophy must come to play in political parties for both their leaders and members to be on the same page in order to enjoy internal democracy. In Abuja, David Irie, NTA News. And still talking politics, the Action Democratic Party, ADP, has rejected the outcome of the election of the Inter-Party Advisory Council, IPAC, on ground of irregularities. Charles Alpha tells us more. The December 18, 2023 IPAC election aimed at electing a new leadership produced Maman Dantele of the Allied People's Movement, APM, as winner of that election with 10 votes and closest rival Yabaki Yusuf Sani of the Action Democratic Party ADP and sitting chairman of IPAC securing eight votes. National Organizing Secretary of ADP Alex Mayanga while addressing newsmen at the party secretariat in Abuja said after investigation some irregularities were discovered and the party has therefore rejected and taken legal action. The electoral committee which was supposed to be composed of three members was illegally whittled down to two members. Added to the above, eligible contestants were unjustly disqualified. The court, in its motion expathy, directed IPAC to maintain the status quo, allowing engineer Yabage Yusuf Sani, led executive committee, to continue piloting the affairs of the council until the hearing and determination of the motion. Alex Mayanga said while the party will continue to uphold democratic values and the rule of law, IPAC, he said, should serve as an example to political parties in guaranteeing good governance and transparency. Charles Alpha, NT News. Another break beckons. Please remain tuned. <laughs> Glad to have you back. The Minister of Arts, Culture and the Creative Economy, Hanatu 
Musawa is calling on well many Nigerians to support Aileen Nollywood actor Zach Oji, who underwent a brain surgery on January 1, 2024, in Abuja. Gufan Shaji Gwai reports that Musawa visited the actor in a private hospital in Wusi, where she sympathized with the veteran actor's family, describing him as a national asset. Mr. Zach Oji has been in the industry for decades. This is a man that has given his time, his effort, not only to make us laugh, but to entertain Nigerians. And he's one of the individuals that was the very foundation of the, you know, the Nollywood or the film industry in Nigeria. So, you know, uh, unfortunately, there was a situation where he had a health challenge. And I understand yesterday he had neurosurgery. The least that we can do as an administration is to give him all the support, the necessary support in terms of prayers and in terms of other necessary supports that is required to ensure that not only do we save his life, but to ensure that he has the best quality of life. So it was important for me, not only um, as a minister of arts, culture and the creative economy, but as a Nigerian to come and give Mr. Zak Oji and Mrs. Ngozi Oji all the support that is necessary. The Nollywood star's wife, Ngozi Zak Oji, thanked the minister for her benevolence and for creating time to visit her husband. Community engagement initiatives of the Nigerian Television Authority is growing from strength to strength as NTA Sokoto Network Center organizes maiden dinner and awards night in honor of the government and people of the state for their hospitality and contributions to the station. Asmao Habibu Shagari reports that the occasion featured presentation of awards of excellence to some veterans in the media industry. That was the mood at the Medin Dinner and Awards Night organized by NTA Sokoto Network Center to recognize some personalities for their various contributions to humanity and NTA in particular. Governor Ahmad Ali Sokoto, represented by his deputy Idris Gobir, was honored with the Best 100 Days Achievement Award project. The deputy governor lauded management and staff of the center for identifying with the efforts of the state administration in providing more dividends of democracy to the people, describing the award as not belonging to the governor alone, but the entire people of Sokoto State. We will make sure that we put our best to assist Nigeria Television Authority into Sokoto. The former Director General National Broadcasting Commission and APC stalwart Dr. Nasir El Ladibago, former Executive Director Programs Marlon Bellesili, and former Zonal Director Sokoto Network Center Bello Abubakar were among the awardees in the veterans category for the roles they played in shaping the media industry in Nigeria. I feel a great honor and uh, I'm very grateful to Almighty Allah. But most importantly, the foundation of all those that trained me started from. Hadja Damogi, Kiri Ahmed, Peter Igo, and a host of all those that influenced my growth and my, you know, my, my development. We sincerely appreciate them because you know, if somebody has done well, there's need for you to appreciate him one with the other. Catholic Bishop of Sokoto Diocese, Most Reverend Matthew Hassan Kuka, was among the prominent personalities honored for his contribution towards ensuring peaceful coexistence among people in the state. His clients of the center and stations, as well as some deserving past and serving staff from the Sokoto, Kebi, and Zamfara NTA stations, were rewarded for their meritorious service to the organization. In Sokoto, Asmao Habibu Shagari, NTA News. Congratulations to the our deeds there. Indeed, you can't beat the rich. Let's talk sports. Nigerians back coach Pasiro to win AFCON as Aruna Kadri cruised into WTT quarterfinals in Doha. Details of this and more with Austin Edemodu. Despite some injury concerns in the Spring Goose squad ahead of their opening campaign against Equatorial Guinea on January 14th in the African Cup of Nations in Cote d'Ivoire, Nigerians believe the Spring Goose coach Joseph Pesero has enough quality at his disposal to win the tournament. The competition is different from the qualifiers, so we expect the boys with the caliber of players we have in the national team at the moment. Looking at the 25-man squad, I think we have good players, the good players that 
that, that are able to take us far in the tournament and possibly win it, which is what the coach is promising Nigerians. The Abu Dhabi camp has come alive on Wednesday with majority of the invited players shipping off their training for the tournament in the absence of injured Kelechi Hernacho and Wilfred Ndidi. Nigeria's table tennis sensation Aruna Quadre rallied from two sets down to beat world number five Hugo Calderano of Brazil 3 2 at the ongoing World Table Tennis Championship on Wednesday in Doha, Qatar. Top smash from Aruna. No way! The result qualifies Quadri for a quarter-final ticket against world number one Fan Zendong of China on Thursday. Finally, the death of FIFA Under-17 World Cup winning coach in China 1985, Sebastian Brodericks, has been described as a great loss to the football fraternity in Nigeria and beyond considering his historic antecedents. His footprints are left on the sands of time for being the first coach to win a global football gold medal for Nigeria. The former Electricity Corporation of Nigeria and Bendel Insurance of Benin midfielder was a member of the National Challenge Cup winners with the ECN and also a member of the 1968 Olympics team. Late Brodericks also coached Nigerian club sides including Bendel Insurance, El Kanemi Warriors and Udoji United. With Sports Update, I'm Austin Edemodu, NTA News. All right, for sports done, let's take a quick peep at the weather outlook for Thursday. Welcome. With the continuous influx of moisture into the country, we expect the southern half of the country to see some patches of clouds and a bit of haziness. Later in the afternoon and evening hours, isolated cases of thunderstorms is expected to affect some parts of Lagos, Delta, Bielsa, and River State. The north and the north central cities are expected to be bright and hazy, throughout the forecast period. And in this period of dust haze, we strongly advise the general public to cultivate the habit of drinking lots of water to avoid dehydration. And also, parents, please ensure to keep your children warm, especially during the night hours. Thank you for watching. I remain Joyce Ogunle, and I'll see you again. Many thanks, Joyce, for the heads up. And that concludes News Extra tonight. Many thanks for investing your time with us. Have a good night.